the Disability Royal Commission report was was tough, actually. You know, when you're a person with a disability and you're reading where we're at, it's um, yeah, it, it, we're heading into what is a very nervous time for the community. Very, very, very nervous. And, and I'm reading all of these things, and I, you you just get overwhelmed with what you can do right now to try and rectify this. And I got to this disability champions part where it's like we need people with disabilities to be to be talking about vaccination you know and I just had this kind of light globe moment because I hadn't been talking about vaccination because I always want don't get your advice from a wheelchair racer get it from your GP and they've been yelling at you for the last 12 months but I, I have to do something. I have to talk about these coming weeks and talk about just encouraging people with disabilities, their workers, their advocates to do whatever they can do to get in to be a vac- to get vaccinated. I, I know uh, that it's that it's hard to get there, and people with disabilities are often more isolated than anyone. They are often at the whim of the support workers around them to get to that vaccination hub. Even there, there are issues with accessibility for those who are you know, have intellectual disability as well as those with physical disability. But uh, I think that I'm going to spend my next few weeks just talking about and encouraging everyone to get vaccinated. We've shared this hardship of COVID over the last 18 months. But once we start opening up as a community, the pressures of COVID isn't shared equally. Uh, COVID will find its way into the community of those who are vulnerable. And disability, as as a proud man with a disability, I don't know whether I am one of those people. Disability has quirks where often you don't know your own body. But it can't just be a, a conversation about getting people with disabilities. We need our support workers. We need as many people as possible to get in there and get vaccinated because that will reduce the transmission and potentially not make it to my community. And my community, those who are vulnerable, your nan, those who are elderly, those who are uh, those are the people that are going to bear the brunt of COVID when we open up. So you can be, I don't care whether you vote for Labor or Liberal or the Greens or One Nation, you can still get vaccinated. You can be vaccine, vaccine hesitant. You can be a little bit worried about it and you can still get vaccinated. Life is about doing things potentially that you don't want to do but it's for the good of the others, the good of everyone. And we as a community, the Australian community, one of the things that I hope that I hold dear to us is that we look after people. We look after you, 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 those who are vulnerable, those who can't get that vaccination. You can be anti-government and protesting on the streets and you can still go and get vaccinated because you recognise the impact that you have with those who can't do it. Even the individuals with disabilities who are vaccinated themselves, they are still more likely to receive the complications of COVID when we open up. Don't wait for mandates. Don't wait to be told that you have to do it. Do it because you recognise that you play a part in a community, the community that we love. So so you're reading through all of this data, you know, that's happened around... I, I. I can't get into that, can't get my head around it, but I can sit here and, and if need be, beg and plead for every person who is able to find your local chemist that's that's doing vaccinations. Go to your state hubs. You talk to your GP. We're, we've got a time limit now and we need you to work as hard as you possibly can to reduce the transmission that will eventually end up in my community. Look, if you were a a tradie, a hairdresser, if you were a a, a cook, whatever it is that you you do in our community, you can play that part about reducing the transmission. You you may even rally against this this vaccine and say that it doesn't, you know, it doesn't stop me getting COVID or or it doesn't, but it it does reduce the transmission. It, It does play a part in taking you out of that chain that will eventually move, end up in those who are vulnerable. If you, if you don't want to do it, uh, I would ask you, beg you, plead you to reconsider. Uh, and disability isn't hidden away. No matter what job that you take in our community, people with disabilities, we're in there somewhere. Uh, and, and again, 
for me, what I love about this country, I feel like I have been spoiled because I've been given so many options that so many people have looked after me in my career and in my life. Well, now we have a condensed version to prove that right, that we as a community will rally over these coming weeks. And it's not just New South Wales or Victoria that needs to do it. COVID will get into our community in every single state and territory. And the burden of COVID that will be born when it gets there will be people with disabilities. It will be the vulnerable. It will be the isolated. So no matter how fit and healthy you are, play a part in reducing the chance that it gets there. You know what would help right now is if the, you may not play a part in the world of those with disabilities, but you may know somebody who does. And if that person is vaccine hesitant, if they were concerned about taking that vaccine, call them now and, and talk to them about the very real risks that's coming, <laughs> not the, the risk, the very minuscule risk of taking a vaccine. I'm talking about a very real and dangerous risk for my community. So that's the thing that you can do right now. Obviously, check in with your with your uh, with with people with disabilities. Obviously, give them a call, have a talk. Like all communities, we need that social engagement. But when we are opening up, I've had some amazing messages from disability support workers that are that that, that are not going to be able to open up because of fear with the people that they work with, the fear and the absolute knowledge that even though they, they, their client is, is fully vaccinated, they realise that there is a, some very real danger there as well. So it, it, I, I think that what we can all do is be a part of this last few potential weeks ahead to really capitalise on the last 18 months of hard work that we've done. <laughs> and it has been hard, but now's the moment that you grab hold of something that is practical that you can do, and it's about convincing as many people as you possibly can, however hesitant, however sceptic, do what you've got to do to get them vaccinated.